I'm standing outside Railroad's library or resource center. In this module, we'll discuss the importance for you to create an outside resource center. This is, of course, an advisory board that will provide you straight talk at a very low cost. An advisory board, unlike a board of directors, has neither legal obligation nor authority to give direction with respect to the firm. They bear no fiduciary duty. Therefore, they are able to focus on giving seasoned business advice in a way that a more formal board of directors could not provide. In terms of numbers, I would suggest your initial board membership be restricted to two to six individuals as sufficient for a small business. As your business grows, so can your advisory board increase in size. The composition will be folks who are well respected within the community and within the industry. Recently retired executives from larger firms would make a good feeding ground to identify sound potential members for your board. They bring with them credibility, connections within the community, ecosystem intelligence, and may even in the fullness of time become potential investors. It has been my experience that a process of bonding takes place between members of an advisory board and the firms that they are identified with. They will develop a passion, a love for your firm, and will take some form of unofficial ownership for the firm's well-being, similar to Big Sisters program. Because of the potential of conflict of interest, I do not recommend that you include your lawyers, accountants, bank managers, nor customers on your board. You have to pay for their advice as required in any event. Focus on other entrepreneurs and vendors. It gives them a vested interest in the well-being of your company. People who have done it from scratch. They are the been there, have done it folks. You want people who can look at your firm's issues without ego or emotion getting in the way. Advisory board members can be used to dress up small firms. This is clearly a make-weight, but it is not a good idea to create your boards solely for this reason. To do so would be a mistake. The real power is straight talk from the shoulder, honest advice. They will coach, evaluate, play devil's advocate, and make business introductions. You will get the absolute straight, unvarnished truth from these folks. This advice is extremely valuable guidance in operating your firm. Like Weight Watchers and other activities that involve peer pressure, you will find the formal structure of an advisory board will give you a sense of accountability and impose a discipline on the management of your firm. You want your board to critique you rigorously as you introduce new innovations. This is a powerful concept. This is brain power that money can't buy. Here you have three to six talented people thinking about the best interest of your firm. Who would not want this? How often should you meet? Certainly quarterly meetings work well in most cases. This affords sufficient time for you as owner to reflect upon the emerging issues as well as on the advice received from earlier meetings. You do not want to burn out the goodwill of these folks. Reflect on your issues and consolidate them in preparation for fixed quarterly meetings. Keep them fun. If you have time, read how Martha Stewart conducts her meetings. You'll find it fascinating. Martha's boards are always well treated to fresh flowers, fabulous cooking, and presentations. Hence, it became a look forward to social event by her board members. We have included some further insights on this in the reference materials. How much should you pay? The advisory boards are one of the best bargains pound for pound you'll receive for money. Make your board meetings professional in presentation and agenda-driven. I have been successful in attracting influential advisory boards for the price of an upscale quarterly luncheon. At the beginning of the luncheon, I'd provide a briefing on the issues that I needed some direction. Discussions would take place during the course of the meal and for a short period afterwards. On occasion, you might want to go as far as an honorarium of two to $500 a head for each meeting. At a certain point in your firm's development, a further model you might wish to consider is to issue share options to your board members. 
This would enable board members to acquire shares at some date in the future at a price much higher than they are currently selling for over the counter. This model contributes to a further vesting of interest in your firm's well-being and motivates the board members to assist the growth in the value of their share options. In most cases, I would recommend the first alternative, an upscale meal as being sufficient. Your mental model. You want growth, more money, and no surprises. The trade-off in using an advisory board to achieve these common goals means that you must be prepared to share your innermost secrets and fears with your board. Ms. Bratina, president of Direct Response Marketing, grew her firm's revenues to several million dollars a year by overcoming her reluctance to divulge too much to her board of advisors when seeking their advice. When she became candid with her board, there was an exponential growth as a direct result of the solid business advice she received based on the true facts being presented to the board. You will be required to contribute honesty and openness. If you are unwilling or unable to do that, then of course this strategic thinking concept is not for you. Your new mental model must accept the thought that it is smart to use people who bring external insight into the operation of your business. Listen now to Dr. Stephen Long, Acting Dean of the School of Business at Royal Rose University, and the value he receives from the school's Board of Advisors. STM. Do you have a Board of Advisors? If not, are you ready to commit to bearing all to your board? If not, why not? If you are going ahead, then list three possible names for consideration. Identify what you feel they can contribute, their competencies, based on the materials in this module, to the well-being of your firm. If you have a board of advisors, then analyze how the composition, the numbers, the competency of members, etc., and the frequency of meetings measure against the materials presented in this module. Identify three areas that require further attention after this program.